All right, we're gonna start a really easy to make recipe. This is a great holiday baking. We're gonna do some white chocolate bark. And what we're gonna use is uh, just standard old Hershey's chippets. We're gonna use some dried cranberries and some dried blueberries. This is a really easy recipe that any uh, anyone can make, including your kids. Get them involved in this. What a great way to celebrate Christmas. Um, so all we're gonna do is start by opening up the chippets here. We're gonna pour about just a little over half of it into a microwavable safe bowl. So this is a, a no-nonsense kind of recipe here. Um, you don't need the stove, you don't need the oven, you need nothing but a microwave a handy spatula, and a microwave safe bowl. I prefer plastic only because it helps heat up things uh, a little bit quicker. Um, as well, it's really easy to scrape clean. It's not like a ceramic bowl where, you know, sometimes, um, depending on how much you're making, um, it can actually, the heat from the bowl can actually start to uh, make your microwave malfunction because it gets too hot. Anyways, we're gonna put this in. It's really important with any type of chocolate um, that you use the defrost setting on your microwave. Do not use any other power setting other than defrost because you need to slowly melt the chocolate. If not, it will burn um, and uh, short bursts, all right? So I'm gonna put it into the microwave for approximately about uh, two minutes on defrost. Um, I'm just using the meat setting, that's all I use. I don't use the fish or the chicken or whatever else settings your microwave have. After about two minutes, we're gonna take it out, we're gonna stir it up. We're gonna get those molecules moving around the heat so that way it starts to break them down. Um, and uh, once you do that, when the chips, um, when they, you see that there's still a few that aren't melted, I'm gonna throw it back in. So I'm gonna be back in about uh, two minutes time and show you how we do it. One of the other things you can do while you're melting your chocolate is get your uh, cookie sheet uh, ready. All I'm using is parchment paper, cut enough to make sure that it fits the, uh, the entirety of the cookie tray. Um, and uh, this is all your prep work that you need. Um, what we're gonna do when we get uh, all the ingredients mixed together, we literally dump it out onto the cooking sheet and then we, we spread it out to make it somewhat even and basically covering the entirety of the cooking sheet. So this is about a minute and a half on defrost. Uh, my microwave started beeping, which usually means it's time to either turn it over on a defrost mode. So all I'm gonna do is take my spatula here and I'm gonna start to mix this up a bit. And as you can see here, it's actually starting to melt in. So what we wanna do is really start to move those molecules around because the one thing that we don't want to happen is for any of this chocolate to actually burn. And particularly because we're wor working with white chocolate, um, you can imagine once you start to get a little bit of brown burns on it, it, uh, it deteriorates the, the overall aesthetic of the chocolate and also can affect the taste as well. So we're gonna stir this around really good, just using a spatula, really get in at the sides and on the bottom of your bowl here. We're gonna stir it around just a little bit more here. We can see it's really melting um, really quite well. And just about all the chips here are in fact broken down into uh, a smooth sort of creamy mixture here. Just stir it around a little bit more here, break it down, it's looking really good. Um, so you saw how we stirred it. Um, you can see every, just about every chip itself still looked intact, but as soon as we start moving those molecules around um, in the bowl, what we're left with is a nice creamy chocolate. So once we've got that, what we're going to do is try to get as much off the spatula as possible because we don't want to waste any of this chocolatey goodness. A little bit more off just by tapping it. There we go, we got a little bit off there. I'm just gonna put the spatula down to rest. And what we're going to do, so all of these chocolate chips here, and don't worry, I've washed my hands. Um, if you can see them, they've got a perfect sort of tempered look to them here. And what we need to do is we slowly need to add some of this tempered chocolate into the mix itself. So I've got just a little under half a bag left there. So I'm gonna add a little bit in there, grab my spatula, and we're gonna to start to stir this around as well. And what we're trying to do is because tempered chocolate um, goes through sort of a heating process 
and really helps to create that form and that texture of those chocolate chips. And because we need this to, we, obviously we're gonna add some more ingredients to it. We need to make sure that we, uh, we get this chocolate back to kind of its original state, um, not only for aesthetics, but also to help it um, set more properly. So as you stir it around, all these non-cooked um, chocolate chips, you'll see that they're, they're in there. You can start to see some of them aren't breaking down, and that's okay. This is all part of the process here. So I've stirred it around. It's getting a lot thicker, a lot harder to kind of move around. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop this back into the microwave, still on the defrost setting. Let me get some of this extra chocolate off here. And once we've got that kind of settled, and that's okay, my spatula still looks quite coated, but that's okay because... Once we, uh, once we heat this back up, um, obviously when we put our spatula back in, most of that stuff on the spatula will melt as well. So I'm going to pop this back into the microwave probably for about a minute or so. I'm going to kind of watch it and see how much it's breaking down. And then we'll come back and we'll add the rest of the chocolate chips. All right, so I'm back. Let me grab my spatula here. You can see it's all kind of breaking down again. So I'm going to give this a stir. And it's really, really easy to stir this stuff now. Look at that. I'm getting this nice, milky, smooth mixture here. Again, make sure you get to the bottom and against all the sides, really scrape all that stuff off because we don't want to don't want to lose any of this. All the chips that I put in have been broken down, so now I'm going to add the rest of the package into my bowl. Every little last one. There we go. All right, don't want to waste. And again, we're going to stir this up. Now it's best to usually put this on a counter, obviously, because you can get more leverage um, to break this down, move it around without spilling or creating any mess. I like no mess recipes. Um, those are my favorite ones. So we're just gonna stir in those fresh chocolate chips. Most of them are breaking down because of the heat that already exists within the mixture. Again, we're gonna continue to move all of these around and get into that nice, milky smooth format here. Now after about, you know, sort of the length of the time that I've been doing this, I'm seeing that the, the some of the chips are, are not really breaking down all that much. I'm kind of using a jab technique just to make sure that the heat gets distributed into those new chips that we just added and see if we can't help break this down. And if you notice um, that they're not completely melting down, that's okay, we can throw it back in the microwave. Again, not very long, just short little bursts. I think this would probably, at the state I'm at right now, let's see, you can see some of those chocolate chips um, just aren't breaking down, despite me moving that around. So again, just shake off that spatula a bit, and we're gonna throw this back in the microwave probably for about 30 seconds or so. So let me pop this back in and I'll be right back. All right, so that was about 25 seconds. Again, just stirring this up and right away you can see all these, all these chips have already melted down. And then that was like three turns of my spatula in the bowl and this is done. All right, so for this one, we're gonna add some cranberries here into the mix and then we're gonna add blueberries and how much is really dependent on you. Of course, sometimes a little bit is just enough. Um, sometimes we have a tendency to, uh, to overdo it. So I'm just gonna grab a good handful, pop them in, take a look, go, okay, maybe a pinch more, why not? And then we'll take our dried blueberries here. And most of this stuff you can just get at uh, any type of bulk food store. Um, I find it's a little bit more reasonable. You can control just how many you're, uh, you're going to actually need um, without having to overcommit to a, a huge bag um, because like I said a little bit kind of does it so we get our dried blueberries here again about a handful drop them in take a look yeah I could use a pinch more all right so now that we've got these all in here all we have to do is get this good little stir around sort of evenly distributing these throughout the entirety of that creamy smooth white chocolate mix here. Get them all nicely covered here. Pay particular attention to the sides of your bowl as well as the bottom because we know sometimes things start to uh, to settle. 
and take a look at it, see how uh, how thick it is with things. You know what? I think I uh, I skimped a little bit, and we never want to skimp on some of this stuff, so I'm going to add about half a handful of each into the mix. Again, quickly give it a stir around. There, that's looking better already. All right. So, as I go through it, kind of give this a good mix, so that way all of the uh, the dried fruit that we've added here are covered in that chocolate. You can see right here, it's a nice little mix. And all we have to do now is take our cookie sheet right here, and we will start to uh, to place this onto the actual cookie sheet here. Let me see if I can get this into uh, a better angle for you. Probably not. Again, I'm not a pro at this. So let me uh, let me just pour this stuff out onto the cookie sheet, and uh, we'll get this get this started. I always like to sort of take a center line down my cookie sheet. Um, so that way we can work the chocolate mixture right to the edges of, uh, of the tray here. Get all this stuff. That's good stuff. And it is a little sticky, and that's okay. But we just keep working it, working it down the bowl. And make sure we get this all nicely settled into the tray. There we go. Oh, this is so good. It smells so good. Don't want to waste any of this stuff. Try to work as much as you can. Obviously, there's always going to be a little bit left in the bowl only because when you move your spatula around, some of it starts to stick. But we just be patient and we move as much as we can into it. There we go. Excellent. So you can see what my kind of blob looks like. And all I'm going to do now is take the side of the spatula and sort of move this mix. Into, into the sheet, try to create about an even layer, you know, kind of, I'd say about a quarter inch thick. Obviously it's, with this one, it's a little bit more challenging because you've got the dried fruit that's in it. And it's okay for it to, uh, to show. You just wanna kinda even it out. If any of you guys have ever, uh, ever mixed cement and sort of poured your own cement pad, it's very much kinda like working with that. So just smooth that out. And don't worry, because it is bark, um, it's supposed to look uneven in texture. So we're not going for a finesse even. We're just kind of trying to make it look as good as possible here. And there we go. I think I've got all that done. Let me show you what the finished product looks like. There we go. So just really, really simple. And then all we need to do after that is pop it in the fridge, let it cool. Um, usually depending on the temperature of your fridge um, and how hot the chocolate was going into the tray, um, usually about an hour, ideally two hours if you can, really let that chocolate take hold and form and kind of let those molecules all kind of get back congeal together around all that goodness that you put into it. Um, once it's done, it's really simple. All you have to do is break it up. And the nice thing about the parchment paper is you can kind of fold it a little bit to kind of break it up. Remember, it's completely uneven. That is the beauty of bark. There's no precise cuts. You don't have to square things out. The more odd it looks, the better and the better it tastes in my opinion. Anyways, hope you like this recipe. Really simple. Total time is probably about 15 to 20 minutes um, doing it. Obviously, I've slowed things down a little bit to be able to show you everything that we can do. And uh, for everyone, have a very Merry Christmas.